up, what's up, what's up? It's another Booze and Reviews. It's your man, Mugu. Your man's critique. <laughs> Watch your mouth. And Trouble T. Roy. Signing. Yeah, we back with another review for y'all, man. Uh, today's movie is American Me. Um, this was Critique's pick. And uh, so I'm going to let him take it off from here. All right. All right, so I chose American Me. Um... A dear genre, uh, uh, a dear genre of a movie that's um, near and dear to my heart. I like um, I like uh, mafia movies, um, uh, international mafia movies. This one, um, American Me, is directed and stars uh, 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 Edward, James. Edward James almost, and it is based on a true story. Um, a lot of the incidents or, or, or portrayals or situations, uh, about 80% of them, are true. Uh, little things were changed, but the bigger picture of the situation were true. So it, um, it takes set, of course, in East, L in East L.A., um, and it starts with his father, who was a uh, zoot suit wearing Mexican back in uh, 1953, in the 50s, that zoot suit wearing uh, Latino style was big. Um, riot breaks out between Mexicans and, was it the Navy? Military. This, I think it was Army and yeah, the, uh, Sailors, I think. Yeah, yeah the yeah. Sailors. Who's yeah. Sailors? Navy. Okay, yeah, well, little fight breaks out. Um, he gets separated from his girlfriend. The the uh, sailors end up raping his girlfriend, beating him up. Um, fast forward to to at this point in time, Edward James Olmos is a young man um, who is trying to build protection, uh, togetherness within the neighborhood. Um, it starts out as friends with uh, Mundo and JD. These are his best friends. Um, um, at this point in time, the 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 uh, gang or the mafia was not so much set in stone, but this was the stepping stone to it. Like I said, this is a true story. So the character that Edward James almost plays, he actually starts La Inme, which is uh, the Mexican mafia. La Inme is stands for the letter M. Um, and it's just a story of young kids growing up, protecting each other, looking out for each other, and what comes from that. As they get older, things get more serious, things get more organized, things get more um, played into the neighborhoods, the streets, and in jail, where if you, um, if you are familiar with these type of movies, or if you, or if you are familiar with um, gangs in prison, if you run the inside, you run the outside, right. and um, and that is pretty much the gist of the movie, um, excluding excluding uh, certain parts, certain situations, how it became to be, what went on, who dies, this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. um, um, my review goes as such. Of course, if I, if I got, if I named the movie, I have to give this movie. I'm going to start it off with. I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it. I give it a pint. I give it a pint. Um, um, okay. um, I'm not going to give it a fifth. If you watch this before, we give fifths. Our ratings. Mugu will explain our rating, our rating <laughs> system uh, later on. But we've given fifths. We've given uh, two cups. We've given sips. a cup. Sip. <laughs> and we've given sips. Um, and the reason I give it a pint, I give it a pint of Glenfiddich. <laughs> okay? And the reason I give it a pint of Glenfiddich, if you ever had Glenfiddich, you can't drink a fifth. Um, unless you got like six people. It is good aged <laughs> whiskey mm -hmm. okay and um and glenn Fittich is good shit so and that translates to this movie the screenplay the writing 
Um, um, and if you've watched our videos before, I always say if it's relatable or somewhat true, you you starting off with a quarter of a cup right there for me if it's relatable. I've seen enough um, uh, either documentaries or movies that's based on true um, events yeah. to know that um, to know that if this this movie goes a long way uh, so much to where there were people killed over this movie. The real Mexican mafia killed certain people for um, um, for releasing certain information, mostly because the the um, the um, the the captain, the what uh, Montoya is his real name in real life. He got raped in reform school. And someone released that, and Edward James Olmos put that in the movie. He was also, um, a hit was also put out on Edward James Olmos to where he was, he was ducking and dodging. He was nowhere on, he was off the grid for a couple of years because the Mexican mafia was going to tear him a new one. Wow. And that right there. Um, and you about right. Yeah, they put, that puts a real big significance. Like he, I'm pretty sure he knew the risks of this movie and putting that scene in, you know, um, because with Mexican and Latino um, mafia gang members showing weakness or being being done that kind of way, being raped, uh, that's not something that they want broadcasted. And Edward James almost put it in there anyway. But the act, getting back to the review, the acting was superb. Um, um, I forget Peg Leg Joe's real uh, William Forsythe. Mm, yeah, he yeah. did Forsyth. an excellent job, and the guy that played Mundo, the two best uh, yeah, friends that sure. started started the whole uh, La Enme with Monta with Monta Montoya. They all did good. They everything was authentic from the language to the costumes. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, uh, Dialogues, uh, feelings. Um, there was a part in the movie to where he got um, Montoya got out of jail and he started finally reassessing himself with a woman. They had sex, and while they were having sex, you know, towards the beginning, it was like all oh, romantic and she was feeling it. But he resorted back to prison life to where he just something went on in his head to where he turned her over and went to sodomizing her roughly like they do in prison. Um, uh, that showed a whole lot of, like, uh, um, vulnerability, uh, conditioning. It was just so much in this movie that I had to, I had to call it to watch. Um, we haven't touched on any mafia movies um, like this one or, or uh, Latino movies uh, mm -hmm. uh, with this aspect. So, so I do, I do highly recommend this movie. Number one, it is, a, is I ain't saying loosely based. I'm saying based on a true story. 80%, 80 to, 80 to 85% of the situations in this movie happen. They might have changed a couple scenery. They might have, you know, for the effect of the movie, but yeah. A lot of stuff went down because of this movie. Like, people died. And um, it was just fantastic. Um, it's not too much I can say about this movie. So I give it a pint of Glenn Fittich. Um, <laughs> it was just awesome to me. And, uh, yeah, it was just awesome to me. And I really do urge you to see this movie, if that's your t kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I'm right with you. Let's say, so what I what I took from this movie was uh, the whole industrial complex living, mm -hmm. life, tradition, uh, somebody trying to uh, reacclimate to regular society. Mm -hmm. uh, even going back to Little Puppy, yeah. oh. that he really, <clears throat> which was another character um, in the in the movie, which. Trying to uh, reacclimate was just hard to do. Mm -hmm. It was just hard to do, uh, especially with not only just 
coming out of jail and just going into your regular life, but now you're part of a large gang. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to do uh, being part of a large gang because you have, they, you, you are not picking responsibilities, you are giving responsibilities. Yeah, yeah. On the outside. Have, right. You're right. As well as uh, one part of the movie where one of the main uh, character, one of the main uh, members of the gang, Puppet, has to kill his own little brother. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just a, it's it's hard to do. Another true part of the movie, right? Yeah. So, uh, fifty three, fifties, and forty three. Mm -hmm. um, that was one thing that I'm going to bring back to you guys because, like, I I was totally taken, I was totally taken uh, blindly by this. Navy and Army because it was some people I saw that looked like they had uh, Army uniforms on as well mm -hmm. where it was just a mass hysteria they're fighting um, dude was like man I'm not you know the dude trying to tell him hey look JD uh, William Forsyth uh, is trying to tell hey um, uh, Santana's father mm -hmm. hey man we need to leave because it's getting wild out here he like man it, Whatever, I'm getting this. I'm getting a tattoo. It, it, it's whatever. But by the time they get ready to leave, they done rushed in the door, and these cats got sailor uniforms on. Yeah. And I, and it's throwing me off because I'm watching them with these sailor uniforms, and then they fighting like they in another country or something. <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah. then y'all raping motherfuckers. Yeah. Like y'all raping my man's girl. Yeah. And I'm tripping like, really? And he couldn't in front of him. In front of yeah. him. Yeah, in front of him. You know, he don't find out. Other, yeah, yeah, while other sailors are holding him down. Exactly. Yeah. Then they cutting yeah. the hair. They cut the hair. Yeah. You know, they basically get him like a buzz cut so it looked like, you know, you being patriotic or whatever. Yeah. But I'm like, dog, that, that to me, that was crazy as hell. Now, uh... Trouble T. Roy is going to drop some knowledge on y'all like, like he normally does. <laughs> He's going to drop some knowledge on y'all about that because, you know, we in Michigan and it wasn't too far from home. So, at the end of the day, uh, I'm just, you know, I'm, I've watched this movie probably in my lifetime. I probably watched it twice and then three times to refresh myself. And really, I can only think of the reacclimation into regular society. Yeah. And that was the story that I normally got was, wow, you're going to jail, and for however much of the time you're going to jail, uh, and then you're trying to come out and be normal, mm -hmm. or you're trying to come out and be, because um, the times have changed. A productive member yeah. of society. You talking about mm -hmm. a decade at least mm -hmm. that has changed. Things have changed drastically yeah. by the time you come back out. And um, uh, not only was the proponent of the drugs being in the community pre uh, strong pre presence of drugs in their community as well, not only in ours, but in theirs as well, a uh, strong um, presence uh, to where they needed to control the business. Mm -hmm. um, not knowing that Edward James almost which is the same guy, like now where I come around with him is although I've seen American Me, I'm thinking Miami Vice. You know? I'm you thinking Miami Vice. I'm thinking Miami Vice. Oh, you know he was the, What in what aspect? You know he was the uh he was the police chief. The chief, the chief. He That's right. He, chief. Was, he was the police was. chief. I'm about to say Vice. he wasn't cracking or two. Oh hell. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember he was the He was the police yeah. chief. Okay. Yeah. So I'm thinking that. But yeah. now as a director, and I'm like, okay, now another thing that'll get you about this movie, the whole um voiceover or um what we would call the uh narration. Yep, the narration. Yeah. Is in rhyme. Mm -hmm. It's in rhyme form. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. He, you know, he's he's showing some talents that, um, you know, you didn't get out of jail. So you got Montoya Santana, JD. Now that's another person that got me too. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, he's a white dude. He got blonde hair. And it's like, wow, you talking essay and body oil and you talking all this stuff. And it's like, wow, really? You look like American white dude. And that's what they tripped on him about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, how you... But he got the love of the brothers. So and he grew up with Santana. And, and exactly. Yeah, he grew up with them. And that's um, that was another point um, that you can feel, that you took to heart, that even though he was white and he had the lingo, it's like a... He grew up with them. Yeah, it's like if a white dude grew up with uh, black people, he's going to have that lingo. Mm -hmm. He's going to have that swag. Mm -hmm. And... Montana didn't see his color. He just saw that this was my brother. Yeah, this was my car now, my crime partner. Yeah. And he was down for whatever. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. So now the next dude is Mundo, mm -hmm. um, which he winds up holding jail down, period. The enforcer. So, yeah. uh, well, I got another one for you, Who? which we just talked about him, mm -hmm. but uh, Mundo is played by Pepe Serna. Mm-hmm. The next person that I'm about to bring up to y'all, we just talked about him in The Rising Sun. Yeah. And which trips me out. Yeah. This dude is Asian. He's El, El Japo. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. right. Yeah. El Japo, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the, we just did a review on The Rising Sun. He's one of the major actors in that. And uh, I'm going to mess his name up. I'm going <laughs> to tell y'all right now. Uh, Kari Hariku. Tagua. Yeah, you fucked that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if yeah, you see, but we got what you're saying. But yeah. if you see him in this, it's like, wow, an Asian dude mm -hmm. or a Japanese dude. Mm -hmm. But he was the he was one of the enforcers yes, as well. Yes. And uh, you know, just going through this, it's like, wow. And I think at this point, I think even at any time of knowing these back and forths in jail of how intricate these damn wars are and how they get around and how these yeah how they leverage all of this stuff it's just crazy mm -hmm. and um you know you have to have a team it's already approved to you so you got three main gangs you got the Aryan Brotherhood you got La Ma and then you got the Black Gorilla family mm -hmm. the BGA so the blacks the whites and the Mexicans that's pretty much it. And so now they're all trying to vie for power. All protecting their own. Showing respect. How do you do all of this in this small little uh, area? You know, it happens in this movie. And when you tune in to watch it, you're going to learn a lot of stuff. You're going to learn a lot of stuff uh, about how that life is. And so I'll go ahead and say... I give this movie a full cup. And the reason I give it a full cup is because not only would I, did I learn some things, uh, the acting was pretty well, uh, the acting was pretty uh, was pretty good. Um, certain points of the movie, like I like the point where um, he gets arrested, Santana gets arrested for the second time. But right before he gets arrested, his woman, his girl, She's trying to get him to understand what's going on right now and that he needs to change. Uh, and that, hey, you killing people in our community with what you're peddling. And it's two people, it's two sides of you. And she fell in love with one side of, the, of him, which was the young, innocent man who didn't know how to make love. Right, she who fell went to jail in, yeah, early. Who so, went to jail early. She and fell came up. out grown, didn't yeah, go yeah. through none of the periods no. of growing up. or Didn't have no like childhood. Adult, didn't have didn't really have no childhood. Yeah. No young adulthood either. Exactly. Yeah. And so she falls in love with that side of him. But then she's explaining to him about the other side of him that she necessarily doesn't like. Who is the mafia king? Yeah, the, the, the captain who calls shots to kill people. Exactly, brings drugs into the neighborhood. Yeah. the sodomizer boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the sodomizer. <laughs> and the reason he got arrested that second time, I believe she was, she actually really got through to him. Yeah, but at the same time, he went to jail for 
taking dope off of Little Puppet. Mm -hmm. Little Puppet had just got out of jail and he was getting married. Yeah. And the police showed up, so he took the charge. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. that's what I wanted to hit on after you had got finished talking, but since no, we're already good. in it. Go ahead. But that's what I wanted to hit on when Mugu said, yeah, you coming out and you are trying to reacclimate to society and you have responsibilities to your gang. That's how deep it was. Yes. Yeah, you can try to reacclimate yourself, but your gang, uh, any orders you get from um, El Capitan comes first. Yeah. And and that was the dilemma. Like, you know, anybody and and little puppy was trying to go straight. It was scenes in the movie where he was like, I wanna get married, man. Fuck all of this gang shit. Boy, and that's where I wanna get a job. Yeah, he wanted to get a job. And he got an order from Santana. Um, when Santana went back from taking the dope for him, he got an order to do something and he didn't do it. And he was mouthing off that Mouthing off to little, well, I don't want to say mouthing off. He was actually really trying to educate little kids, saying like, yeah, I was in the game, but don't go this way. Don't right. do that. That shit is stupid. He didn't follow orders, and that's where you said where his big brother had yeah. to come out. And his big brother had the order to kill him because he didn't follow through with his, yeah. you know, with the order that the Capitan gave him. And it's true story. And all of this is based on when people, they do stuff for you, they're not doing it for you just because they love you most times. They're doing it to leverage you to get you to do something else. And that's how I kind of see that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I give it a full cut, man. It was a, a little bit deeper story. Maybe, again, and now learning it, learning this backstory, like I say, if you fuck up with Trouble T. Roy, <laughs> he's going to put some knowledge on you that you ain't heard about. And that just got me like, wow, people die for this movie? To be told, because guess what? This ain't a story to be told. It's a story, you know, it ain't a story to be told. <laughs> right. So, you know, people got to go. So, yeah. but yeah, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, uh, pass it on to my man T-Roy and let him put his thing oh. on him. So, yeah, y'all touched on it earlier. Um, for one, I'm going to get my, my, my take on it. I saw this movie, um, actually, as far as like the Mexican Mafia movies, I saw this movie. After another movie called uh, Blood In, Woo! Woo! I was waiting for somebody to uh, bring that up. <laughs> so when I saw that, I, I saw American Me after the fact. You know, you know we talked about yeah. Blood In, Blood Out a mm -hmm. million times. Um, I think this movie has more um, authenticity of uh, the experiences in prison. And uh, when y'all talked about like uh, uh, getting back into society after prison. Mm -hmm. I think this movie really touches on that really well, and I was really intrigued by how they um, pulled those real life stories and kind of pushed them into like a you know a fictional story for this movie. Um, Y'all touched on the we touched on the Zoot Suit uh, riots back in forty I think it was forty three. So mm -hmm. this is yeah forty three yeah late forties yeah. um, through the fifties yeah and mm -hmm. I think it's from what I read it was pretty accurate with the uh, with how they based it in the story. Um, there was some riots going on in uh, L.A. and uh, here in Detroit. Uh, yeah. uh, not only was uh, Latinos attacked, it was Filipinos and black people. So I don't know what the full uh, scope of, I don't know the full reason why um, it happened. But I think it was like an accusation that these people that was really in the, the Zuzu culture was not being patriotic. Uh, for whatever reason, that's, that's something I'm going to do some more research on. But it made me, watching this movie made me want to read into it even more to learn about the, the Zuzu riots in 43. Was it the Vietnam War going on? No, no Vietnam, this was, was World War it? II. It should have been World War II. <laughs> that means they were what, in Vietnam? Vietnam was in the 60s. 60s so and 70s. 70s. So, yeah, that's, this was like World War II, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. And who was we at war with in World War II? Was that Germany? <laughs> was it Germany? Yeah. Okay. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. I mean, right at German, Ar Germany, Austria. Yeah, yeah, it would have been that area. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. So them being unpraised. Yeah, I, I don't think they yeah. was just yeah, like even giving a fuck. Like yeah. maybe. Yep. Yeah. Probably so, wasn't in the list or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So basically, um, 
I enjoyed the, uh, like I said, the authenticity of the story was good. I and it, it made me do a lot of research. Um, I was reading that uh, Danny Trejo, who everybody knows as uh, Machete, uh, got the tattoos on his chest. You've seen him in all kind of movies. He's been in 150 movies. He got his own movie. Yeah. 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 Some some of the interviews I saw that he was affiliated with, because um, he got a criminal past. Yeah. So he was affiliated with uh, a lot of people that was in the Mexican Mafia. And he said personally he knew of like, I think about 10 people that was murdered that was consultants, uh, you know, giving up inside information uh, uh, was in Edward James almost mm -hmm. uh, for the movie. So, um, I don't know, it was things like that that really drew me into the movie that, you know, it just made me say, wow, like, uh, and also, he was extorted, from what I read, uh, by Joe Pegleg Morgan. Was that? I think that was. Yeah, really Joe. Man. Yeah, that was JD. That's JD. JD was a real character. Yeah. Supposedly, he was extorted. Uh, like y'all said, he had uh, his life was on the line. There was a lot of death threats going on. Mm -hmm. Um, which even made it more dope for me because he went ahead on and still made. Still yeah, made still it. made it. Like he didn't make yeah. no changes. Yeah. yeah. But funny. So I'm looking at the writer credits. Mm -hmm. Now, as a writer, Floyd Muttrux mm -hmm. and Desmond Nakano. Mm -hmm. Okay. Desmond Nakano was a screenplay. Floyd Muttrux was with the writing and screenplay. Mm -hmm. Now, these are people who don't. They're not dead, is they? For, I don't know. <laughs> you know. We have to look it up. You know yeah. I hope mean? they're not. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was... But these are the people who had writing credits. Okay. okay. So I was just looking at that because it's like different from like when I look up who directed it, Edward James Alba. Yeah. yeah, so the director is just going to tell you where the camera need to be, get this right. shot, this mm -hmm. and that, and the writer is well, like, talking to the actors. Getting the dialogue in and everything. So, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I don't know uh, what I want to get this from. So would you say, coming from what you're learning right now about screenplay? Would you say that the person who originally was part of the story or knows some of the story, because you know, like you said, they get people who, uh, what do you call that? You get uh, people who are um, to come in and help you with the movie as far as like consultants. Consultants, mm -hmm. yeah. So you think they were talking to them and they writing it? Yeah, so it's like for a perfect example, if you think of uh, Snowfall, we all know Snowfall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They brought in WC, part of West Side Connection, right, right. from L.A. They brought him in to teach all the actors how to, you know, these are the things that we said in the 80s. Most. This wow. is how we talked in the 80s. You, we ain't going to say fight. We're going to say squabble. Most right, right, right. most specifically, Damson Idris. Yeah. He's he, was on code, he was on Conan. He, on code. He, he was on Conan. He came out. I'm... I'm hyped. I'm like red. I'm like dog. This nigga is so authentic. Yeah. He's British. And he started talking like this, my dear, like tea and crumpet. I'm like, hold on. He's British. Number one, I want to kill everybody at NBC for fooling me like this. FX. No, FX. Everybody. Number two, I want to kill Damson Idris for being such a cold ass actor. But right when, like within five minutes. He gave it up to Dub C, and I remember the story. He said he was like, he came, he had met John Singleton, everything was it, and John Singleton was like, yeah, man, I got you a, a voice coach, or like a voice coach, or whoever going to teach you yeah. the ways of South Central L.A. Exactly. And he said, Dub C, and he said when Dub C came, in, came over, when they met for the first time, Dub C came, he didn't even come in to to uh, Damson Idris's residence. He had called him on the phone and said, get out here. And Damson was like, well, who is this? He was like, yo, it don't worry about who it is. Uh, John Singleton told me to come pick you up. I'm this, that, and other. So he came out, and Damson Idris said he was so scared because <laughs> these dudes was talking like regular and telling them what he needed to do, and they was riding through the hood. Just like, this dude is from... What, Boy, London? Across the water. London? Yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he from across the water. He said he was scared shitless, but Dub C said, don't worry about nothing. I got you. This is what you need to learn. And I was so amazed. I was so struck by how good Damson Idris played a dude from South Central. So now, so now to take that and turn it into this review, uh -huh. 
J.D. William Forsythe. Yeah, he yeah, did. So he, sure had he had to go had, into. He had to have a consultant, somebody that's that's from the. He, who knows? He might have met with the real Joe Pegg later. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But he actually he nailed it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You that's why I pulled that out. Somebody yeah. because this that dude, that, that dude long. me the hell off. Yeah, he sound, Yeah, he sounded like a white boy. Blind and I've yeah. seen him play. That grew up. Um, yeah. All types right, of different man. characters. Uh-huh. Uh, William Forsythe. He's a good actor. Yeah, yeah he's a good actor. Mm-hmm. I've seen him play a redneck, a uh, yeah, serial yeah. killer. I've yeah. seen him play some of everything. Yeah. Right? So, um, yeah, so it had to be something like yeah, that. Yeah, so That's... those consultants, they, they mean a lot. And, mm-hmm. uh, you can tell that they, they actually tried to find some um, authenticity uh, put into the movie. Yeah. Um, I would give this movie, only reason I don't give it a full cup, mm-hmm. I want to give it a full cup. Because of the authenticity and everything that's behind the scenes. Only reason I don't give it a full cup is because uh, it's. I think the say story, say, I would say the story mm-hmm. is sort of uh, kind of linear. Okay. There, it's not a bad story, but the story doesn't, I guess I'm still comparing, comparing it to um, Blood In, Blood Out. And you know, blood and blood out had the tale of like three cousins that kind of went in three different directions, yeah. and it kind of still had some authenticity of like prison life and reform and this and that. But I got you, yeah. American mm-hmm. Me. It does. I give it a third of a cup. Mm-hmm. Okay, a third of a cup. I give it a third of a cup. A third wow. of a cup, like down here. Wow. That's a I mean, third that's of cool. a cup. Hey, but look. Uh, uh, no, I think you mean three quarters. Three quarters. That's what I mean. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah. like. I had a couple shots. A third, a, third, a, third, a third of a cup. Just mama. A third of a cup. That you almost no. fell in love. No, no, no. Yeah, no, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, no, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to say, because I know my man. I was like, yeah, 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 I know right. my man. I'm like, I know his Mav ain't that great from the other. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, nigga, you messed up with the last one. <laughs> but no. Uh, go ahead. But no, this was um, this is a very good movie. I, I don't give it a perfect uh, review. Mm-hmm. But out of a dollar, it gets 75 cents. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's, that's a great Is that better for you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, yeah. But uh, yeah. this was a, this was a very good movie. Um, I feel like based on what we all just talked about, all three of us got to recommend it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, this is some some knowledge you should know about. Like, mm-hmm. like when we talk about <clears throat> we talk about people uh, entering back into society that have been locked up and stuff like that. Yeah. It's a lot of more stuff that go along with it. Yeah. You know, not just coming out of jail. You talk like these cats came out of jail, but they came out with responsibilities. Mm-hmm. And who comes out of like in your mind if you've never been in jail or anything like that, you don't think of why would they come out with responsibilities? What the hell mm-hmm. does that mean? Now you see. Yeah, you watch this movie, you'll see that people who it's a fam- like it's a family, but it's also a business. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. it, it, like, I, and maybe the business part come first. But you can also see where it's family, like they have scenes in here to where it would be like any other family, like yours or mine's. They haven't, even though they're in jail, they sitting around, they making a uh, what you call prison uh, lick, corn liquor. Yeah, oh. you know what I'm saying? They sitting around talking about old times. They gabbing, shooting the shit on the inside and outside, but. The main thing is business. Inside, you got to keep control. You can't show weakness. On the outside, you got to run business. The shots are called from the inside. If the captain is on the inside, then the shots are called from the inside. And whatever he says goes on on the outside. And um, I think that was a good part of it. They showed a lot of that. And, um, yeah, man, it's, um, and since T-Roy brought it up, Blood in, blood out is loosely based on the same yeah. uh, Mexican mafia, and yeah, I can feel him when he say like you can't help but to contrast it with the two. And yeah, you got ooh, Lord, you got some good actors in there. You got some good scenes in that too. Blood in, blood out is ooh, that's like trying to choose between Goodfellas and and Casino. Casino. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like shit. Which one do you watch first? Yeah. But you know you're gonna watch both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So outside of that, so you got my, you got mine is a full cup. I got a pint, pint of Glenn Fittich. 
What is Glenn Fittich? Glenn Fittich is, is, uh, uh, is... I was a, pretending like I knew what y'all was talking about. Yeah, it's a top time. shelf. <laughs> it's a top shelf whiskey. It's, okay. Uh, when we come over to my house um, and we do a show, yes, I will crack that bottle for you. Well, I'll spend the night then. <laughs> oh yeah, you probably, yeah, you, you only, you only well, you only gonna need about a shot. Yeah, you know what you gonna what you want to do. Oh, yeah, so you only gonna yeah. need about a shot. Definitely, definitely. Uh, and so you got Trouble T. Roy to give it a three quarter cup. You know, mm. seventy five cent out of a dollar. <laughs> 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 Let's just clear that shit up right now. Yes, but, sir. But you know, at this at the end of the day, I mean. We we watch we watch these movies and we go into them. I mean, it's gonna be a lot of stuff that like in this particular movie. What uh, this is what ninety two. This yeah, this yeah, movie came out ninety two. Yeah, and it's talking about something that was what forty fifty years ago. 40, 40, 50 years. Yeah, prior late forties. Yeah, through the fifties. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, you know. To, to be able to pull that off and with the other uh, stuff that they had to go, the other obstacles they had, mm-hmm. you know. It was actually... It, um, a story to be told. It's, yeah, they it was had, not, you know. They had to not shoot on like one or two days because they got a a um, a, a a credible threat. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, it was, I'm pretty sure it was after word got yeah. out that it was um, the rape scene in the boys' home yes. was filmed. I'm pretty sure. I don't know for sure, but from from research, that's what the Mexican mafia was really the maddest at. Because yeah. showing weakness or portraying weakness, even if it's a movie, they ain't got nothing to do with um, They did not shoot a day or two because it was a credible threat that, you know, if y'all outside, we coming to get you. Pretty much. So, yeah. what I read about the um the scene where um, Santana gets raped in when he was uh, was a ju- juvenile home. Mm-hmm. Um, supposedly the the person he he's portraying the real life person didn't get raped. Mm-hmm. That he was really upset that uh, that the, the Mexican mafia was really upset that that was uh, shown in the movie because what really happened is that somebody attempted to or tried to try him and he actually killed the person. And they actually had a problem with them showing that it was an actual rape. Yeah, yeah. And that, so. that, now the truth is that that person was killed. But yeah. the questions are, did the rape actually right. happen or was he tried? And, and at that point, I even say this. That's Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Right away, That's right. the Hollywood yeah. side. Yeah. Well, we got to show something very controversial. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's go into that. Yeah, yeah. We don't care what really happened. Mm-hmm. But let's go into that. Yeah, because a lot of people don't know. Um, so, you know, just a little off topic, uh, the Tupac movie, the All Eyes on Me movie, mm-hmm. John Singleton was originally supposed to direct it, and they said he had a scene depicted where Tupac was getting raped in jail. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. But they uh, decided to go in a different direction. I'm and glad they did, because I, 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 I couldn't go through yeah. that. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, like, is that's that's the main like that's something that's just definitely gonna catch your eye mm-hmm. every time. I guess it's supposed to make the story more as interesting. A, yeah, and that's us. part of Hollywood. Like they want, like at the end of the day, they want to sell the movie. They want to make the most money, and like you said, the that's something man. that we not gonna know for sure. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it makes for a good movie, yeah. and. That's pretty much at the end of the day. That's what the investors want. That's what the the production company want. That's whoever putting up the money. That's what they want. They number one, they want to get their movie back and they want a profit. So they don't give a shit who gets killed during whatever you put in there, whether it's fake or not. They don't give a shit as long as hey, give me a good return on my movie and I can't be mad yeah. at them because I want the same thing. And that's actually going to make people want to go see the movie even more when exactly. they heard motherfuckers got killed. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So there you go. You got it. American yeah, Meat, we, we, all, we all strongly advise you to see it. If not for a, a good movie, educational purposes, as Mugu said, yeah. um, as far as enlightenment, as far as um, in the realm of T. Roy, it'll probably... Um, it, 
it would probably uh, 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 make you want to do your own research, find out more interesting topics, and come back and tell us what you find. Yeah, Me, personally, I'm too drunk to go do a research. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm too drunk, but I would love to hear from you and what you find. Shit, yeah. we all would. Definitely go to the YouTube page. Make sure that you like, share, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. But comment, 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 comment. We definitely want you to comment. Now, at this point, we already understand how we broke the movie down. This is an older movie. But even at the end of the day, uh, your comments are what is going to start a conversation. And, you know, let's take it even further. You know what I'm saying? If you want to talk about it. Uh, maybe we might have to do another video. Maybe we might have to do a, a, a conversation based on it. But that's based on your comments. That's based on your interaction. If you like it, make sure you like it. If you don't, hey, definitely Whatever. do it. Yeah, yeah. Especially, especially, see, now, and when you watch it, remember this video. Remember what we talked about. Remember, we're talking about, like, I would say, um, I would say, quote, unquote, elegant points of integral points. We haven't even discussed like the killing scenes, the how things go down, how mastermind. Yeah. The movie shows how much of a mastermind Santana was. Uh, coming up, building the Mexican mafia. How they got to the point to where they run prisons throughout the United States. Yeah. This is where it started. This is where it started. We haven't even talked about that. We haven't even talked about how. It sh how the movie shows how ruthless these guys were and why they were ruthless. Why a lot of times it comes across, or a lot of them say, you can't show weakness. Boy. Just for the simple fact that they can't show weakness, we haven't even talked about the things that they do. Like, we talked about maybe one or two things with Little Puppet. Right, right, right. Um, with the puppet situation. How and I think that's it. When they leave, yes, man, we, we talked about it. When yeah. he got out, when, when Santana got out, mm -hmm. and they went to go lean on the uh, the big Italian boss. Dude. Yeah. Italian no, boss. No, he was Which, Mexican. I they, he was went Italian. To, they went to the garden where he was pruning his flowers, and they told him, hey, we don't know what may happen with your son. Yeah, they had his attack. No, he was a mob boss. Yeah, he was a mob boss. Yeah, and they oh, and okay. what they did yeah. to his son. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh man, yeah, yeah. These guys are ruthless, and like I said, eighty to 87, 89, damn near ninety percent of this movie is true. Yeah, yeah they did him. Dirty. Man, it was a hey, hey. Listen, we didn't even touch on like <laughs> it was it it was a uh, mass man. All of this stuff. That went on making the Mexican Mafia the biggest gang in prison nationwide. It was well thought out. It was. If you it could was, be leveraged to kill your brother, mm -hmm. that's not said. What will. You hey, leveraged. Yeah. You fully yeah, leveraged. Like it's, it's nothing they won't do. And, and oh, oh man. And uh, last thing I'm gonna say. Um, if if you've watched enough of these movies, docu series, documentaries, mm -hmm. um, it did go down. I'll just say this one part of the movie. It did go down to where the BGA, the Aryan Nation, and La Inme, it all came to a head to where hey, nobody agreed with nobody, and there was a power struggle. Yeah. And guess who won? But you want you should see how it went down. Oh. You should see how it went down. Yep. They, I don't give a shit these dudes was in prison. Hey, they ain't got nothing but time to think. And Montana <laughs> thought us some shit. This shit was miraculous. It was angelic. Yeah. It was like it was played by... It was a ballet. And the, and the music score was by Mozart. <laughs> and the people dancing was Tiana Taylor, Jennifer Lopez... And Mariah Carey. She can't dance, but I'm going to put her in there anyway. It was an elegant ballet of murder, uh, uh, betrayal. Yeah. Fuck. It was, hey, and that went down. It was true. 
But so, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so okay. here I'm, we go. I might go and watch it again. Yep, too, All right, so here we go. Put your cups up. Thank you for coming to another episode of Booze and Reviews. And like Mugu always say, like, subscribe. It's a, like, <laughs> <laughs> like sub- subscribe, share, 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 subscribe, 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 and comment, comment, comment. Because we definitely want to hear from you. No doubt. Peace. Strike fast, strike hard.